Lucario and Melmetalization is a deck that I've held off playing for a very long time, mostly because whenever I try it, it always goes horribly. I just never draw into what I need. I Intrepid Sword multiple turns in a row and never get anything. But with the release of Vivid Voltage, there's a ton of brand new cards that make the deck better. So I thought, what better time to actually try it out? The best new card for the deck, obviously, is Coding Metal Energy. As long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides Metal Energy, and the Metal Pokemon this card is attached to has no Weakness. That is amazing. This deck was already playing three or four copies of Weakness Guard, and now that Weakness Guard, which was colorless, is now Metal, and that is absolutely amazing. I also tossed in a copy of Sir Chester Bath. All basic Pokemon take 20 less damage. Uh, I mean... Maybe it's going to be good. It's tough to see. Maybe two or three copies is better. But, I mean, if you're doing a mirror match, then you're helping your opponent as well because it's all basic Pokemon take 20 less damage. So who knows what kind of impact that'll have. And then just for fun, I tossed in Aegislash V and VMAX. I mean, Aegislash VMAX, it can end the game with a lot of damage. It has 320 hit points. You put a goggles on it. You do full metal wall. It's really good. And then I, I've looked at a bunch of different lists. I have one Lucario Melmetal, one Zamazenta. You should probably have three Zacian and two Zamazenta, or four Zacian, two Zamazenta, because everyone's going to be playing VMAX decks today because it's Vivid Voltage launch day. But I just have one copy. We'll see what happens. I, I never have any luck with this deck when I try and film a video. So let's see what happens. Uh, I don't have high hopes. And this is an interesting start, so how lucky am I feeling is the question, because I can Cynthia and Caitlin the Metal Energy away, draw three cards, but okay, that is, that's kind of funny, because I play the Metal Goggles, so they better be playing uh, at least two copies of Tool Scrapper. So this is kind of cool. Matt77 underscore 7 with the player's cup, two sleeves, and deck box. Is playing a Galarian Cursula deck on the launch of Vivid Voltage, and if I draw well enough, I can knock this thing out, but that's probably not going to happen, so let's let it ride. Let's see what happens. Just let me draw Metal Energy. Perfect. So I'll do that. I will do that. I mean, do I think they're even playing Energy in this deck? Probably not, right? Uh, sure, let's do that. And... I'll take a little bit of damage. I will Intrepid Sword. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, I don't play... Unfortunately, the deck doesn't play Energy Switch, but that is hilarious. A three energy Intrepid Sword. I'm I'm sitting here expecting, oh, I'm going to get zero Intrepid Sword. Uh, but there you go. Okay, so there's Spike Myth, and there's Amarni, favorite card. Okay, so Spike Myth, whenever I move from the active to the bench, put two damage counters. So I think... Realistically, I just have... Oh, that's... Why am I drawing so well all of a sudden? This this never happens. I hope my opponent got what they needed because I want this game to continue. But this is this is absolutely hilarious. Oh, it's Dragapult. Okay, so I will hold off on using Full Metal Wall until they come up and hit me with the Dragapult. There's the Metal Goggles. So I think... Um, I think if I just put, oh, I should have done the goggles on the active first, but that's fine. I'll just steel fist, attach an energy, and pretty much going to be good to go. I can take the knockout next turn. Uh, yeah, this is, this is interesting. I wasn't expecting to face Galarian Cursula. What I should have done is I should have attached the metal goggles first. Because as long as Cursal is in the active, if I attach energy, I put three damage counters, but Metal Goggles and your opponent's stacks abilities can't put damage counters, so Metal Goggles would have negated it. Uh, okay, that's that's interesting. And they got nothing going on, so I'm just going to take a big old Jirachi knockout. Heavy impact, take a prize. They got nothing going on. Uh, hopefully they get something going, because I want to see this deck, I want to see Galarian Cursula and the Dragapult deck. I don't want to see something bad like this, but to get to my earlier point in the opening about how I'm not hyped about this deck, that doesn't mean this deck isn't good. This deck is very good. It wins tournaments. It does, 
It does several things. Okay, so what I can do is I can Mallow and Lana. Uh, how much does it does 130? Nah, I could be nice, but I want to win this game. But this deck, this is a tournament winning deck. This deck is really good. It slows the game down with full metal wall. Your opponent has to play around, you know, losing all their energy. That's perfect. I will ditch the, well, there you go. Okay. So yeah, I'll just Mallow and Lana. Yeah, so I was going to win that one. That is good to... Oh, I can't see their deck list. But yeah, that was a pretty convincing win. I think I would have won even if they had drawn a little bit better. Just because, I, I mean, you get a three energy Intrepid Sword. You're probably going to win that game. That's just insane. But let's go to game two and keep this going. And I'm going first. We got, we got, oh wow, we got double Age of Slash here. So... What can happen is some bad things. Uh, I'm going first. I really wish I had a Zation just so I could draw some cards, but we're going to see. This This is going to be the, the litmus test here. Is Age of Slash V worthy of being in Lucario Memorization? Personally, I think it's, it's more of a, a luxury, but I mean, if you don't play it, then you have to play Galarian Stunfisk, or you have to play the Duraludon. So it's just, you do need an answer to Decidueye Obstagoon, but I think Decidueye Obstagoon is probably leaving the format, and that's fun. Okay. So this is the water version. They don't play any way to bump my energy. So I think I just do that and pass. Now the question is going to be, do I, do I Marnie or do I Cynthia and Caitlyn, and do I evolve or do I try and do 50 damage with Slash? And I don't really know if there's a correct answer. The best case scenario is if I get a Pokemon, if I get a Quick Ball, I can switch into them. I can do some things. Uh, a well-timed Full Metal Wall would also make a huge difference in this matchup. But I think I think Age of Slash is not what I want to have right now. I think I'd rather have a Zacian V starter. But let's see, how much can you even knock out? So if I take five prizes, that is 150, so I can do 310. So I can, if I take four prizes, I can knock out, oh, that's bad. I can knock this thing out. So that is interesting. So what did they get? They got, they don't really have a whole bunch of stuff. So I think, I think this makes sense because Mallow, yeah, Mallow and Lana is not going to make a huge difference because they can take so many knockouts. So I think what I do is that, I do that, I do the coding energy, I Intrepid Sword, I get a whole bunch of energy, and this is, this is interesting. Some things could happen. So I can Mallow and Lana... Okay, I'm sort of seeing how things could work out here. Mallow and Lana is good in this matchup really early when they try to get some chip damage going. So, what do I do? Okay, so they're going to try and copy the Blastoise, but they don't have a Blastoise in the discard yet. But they're just going to... Oh, they're going to let me... What are they What are they planning here? Oh! That is interesting. Because they're, they're not going to... So they don't have anything. That's really good. They might have just a ton of energy in their hand, though. So I'm sort of at a crossroads. Do I... Do I try and take this knockout? Well, I think I do now. I wasn't going to do it before, but now I am. So let's see the math. So it's 60, 120, 180, 240. I put the goggles on. I survive. If that's how that works, uh, I don't really want a Mallow and Lana. I don't really want a Marnie. I think I just switch, take the knockout with Brave Blade, and this way they might leave me with 10 health left. If that happens, that's really good. And right now the Age of Slash is doing, what, 220? Okay, okay. I'm, I'm coming around to the Age of Slash VMAX inclusion. You know, when your opponent stumbles for a turn, suddenly the card gets good. But, you know, they, they don't really have a whole lot going on. They can Hydro Pump. 
Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess they're going to either Hydro Pump or Spinning Attack. And I don't think they want to do that. So what I will do is, I guess, just switch instead of Mallow and Lana. Oh, they're going to Star Stream. Oh, and that's the ten, that's 10 damage. So they got a ton of energy on this thing. Well, there's a Mallow and Lana. So what do I do? I, I, I. Oh man, I could go for Metal Saucer play here. I think I just switch into Aegislash, hit into him with Max Hack. Hope that they can't do anything, and if they can, I just take a knockout. And the math here is something I wanted to talk about. There's a new Dialga. The new Dialga in the set, Vivid Voltage, for a single energy, you can attach two metal energy from your discard to your Pokemon. And there's a research. That's really good. But they have bosses too. Okay. But the new Dialga, the reason the Dialga isn't in the deck is, yes, it's really good at accelerating energy. But let's say your opponent knocks out a Lucario Mo Metal and a Zacian. Then you put the Dialga down to accelerate energy. And then that's the sixth prize they need. So you're really just counting prizes, and Dialga, the math does not help with Dialga. The reason an Aegislash VMAX might work is because it has 320 hit points. And after full Metal Wall and Metal Gargle, you're taking 60 less damage. So I, I think Aegislash VMAX has a better chance of Di than Dialga of working. Oh wow, they're just going crazy. But the Dialga is good, it's just... In this deck where, you know, your opponent only needs to take six prizes, and that's that's this guy, and then this guy, and then they have one prize left, and Dialga's worth one prize, and it only has, I think, 130 hit points, you don't want to have that liability. You want to have a Zacian V or something. Okay, do they think I'm going to hit them with some status conditions or something? So, that's fun. Uh, yeah, it'd be pretty funny to use a Steel Fist to knock out the Mewtwo and... Okay... So, I guess I'm just sitting here doing nothing, but they had the... I thought they had the knockout, so I'm just gonna use Intrepid Sword and we're gonna go from there. Wow. One of the issues I have with this deck when I play it, off-camera and sometimes when I try and film a video, is that I never see any supporters. <laughs> I'm seeing all my supporters. Okay, so they got the Blastoise in there. That's cool, but they got a Mewtwo that is dangerously close to being knocked out. They're going to research. They're going to try and like do some energy switch shenanigans if they can and attack with that one. They can, so that's good but they're probably so they're gonna get rid of three there for sure oh they're attacking with that one okay so I have a choice I can I think I have to Marnie them I think or wouldn't that just put them into all their energy and that's exactly what they want I don't know I think I think hanging back was the wrong decision here I think I should have been a bit more aggressive but, I mean, they used Iron Rule, they're taking this knockout. Uh, you know, I was a little afraid to put the Lucario and Metal, Metal down just because they could knock it out before I used Full Metal Wall, and then they're just, they're one more Aegis slash VMAX knockout away from winning. So, throughout the last, like, five minutes, I've definitely flip-flopped on Aegis slash VMAX. So, if they'll get rid of, oh, what are they doing? Okay, if I can top deck boss's orders... They are going to be not happy. So, okay. Well, there's a quick ball. I think I just got a, you know, I have the knockout. I can't. So I just need to, I need to just hope that I get a boss's orders is realistically what's happening here. And I can't waste all my supporters, unfortunately, but I think I can lose the Malo and Lana because I don't quite need that. Uh, yeah, so I'll put the Zamazenta on the bottom of the deck. So I have two Switch. I got Goggles. I got three bosses orders. I mean, 
Yeah, I guess I'm just going to Marnie and see what happens. If, if this hand was a little bit better, if this hand had, you know, two Metal Saucer or something, oh, that's bad. Actually, that's really good. The Lily's Poker Doll is really good, but some of these things are not. Okay, so Crushing Hammer, try and get that energy. I don't think that's really going to matter. Um, I don't want to use Tag Call because I Marnied all my supporters on the bottom of my deck. So that means boss's orders is likely near the top of my deck. But if I use tag call, I don't know. I think I think this is the the smart move here. I think it's the only move here. So I'll take three prizes down to one left, and I don't think I have. I got rid of the stun fist, so I, I move. I remove stun fist, chaotic swell, and then I swapped out the weakness guard for coding energy. So, what's going to happen here? I don't know. They're going to take this knockout, so they're just going to use Rocket Splash, take the knockout, and then I am a... I need to top deck. If I top deck a Metal Saucer? I don't know. But how did I get a Marnie before I got a boss's orders? That makes no sense. Okay, so they're taking this knockout. Lily's Polka Doll, Saucer... Uh, I mean, they're in a position where they need a boss's orders, so or they're just hitting a poker doll, and they don't want to do that. All right, so there's ice dance. Okay, I mean, I think I'm just going to be in a position where I have to. There's pretty much hope. You know, if I had a Fion, then I win. Fion and saucer, and that's where that ten damage came into play. Like I said. Uh, okay, so they're going to need some things. Alright. Let's get exactly what I need. That's not what I need. So do that, do that. Uh, tag Call. Smallow and Lana and Lucario and Metal. How many saucer do I? I got two saucer left. I think I just take the Mallow and Lana. I mean, I could... Get rid of their energy, but they have energy switch. I think I think I just gotta go for broke and just be like, I need to draw a boss's orders. So I just put everything I don't need on the bottom of my deck. Hope that I just get what I need. So there's a Poke Doll, there's a saucer. There's a crushing hammer. Okay, I, I see what's happening. There's a crushing hammer. I have a metal saucer. Okay. Get rid of the quick ball, go and get, sure, let's get Lucario my metal, why not? So I'm all in on that boss's orders. 100%, how do I not have a boss's orders? I remember when I had seven supporters in my hand, not one of them was a boss's orders, and I haven't seen a single boss's orders this entire game. That, that is just nuts to me. Usually, you know, when I'm playing ADP Zation, I will always have a boss's orders in my hand and a research at the same time, and I will have to get rid of my boss's orders when I research. When I'm playing this deck, I have three bosses in the deck, and oh man, that's just PDCGO sometimes, right? And let me guess, I, I marnied them into just four energy and a bosses. Don't tell me they're just flexing on me right now. Don't tell me... Don't tell me I marnied them into, what, three energy, a bucket, and a bosses? That would be... That would be insane. Okay, so they got Starstream, that's fine. Top Deck City, let's go. Top Deck City, or else what... Okay. If I don't Top Deck a bosses, I'm going to go with Lucario my Metal. Well, there's a switch, okay. Because it doesn't really matter who I attack with at this point. As long as I'm taking a knockout. So let's see. Oh, we got the bath. That could actually be huge for me. So we got the bath. We got that. I think. Yeah, I can't. I uh, I can't. I was thinking. Well, what if I full metal wall? Would that help the math? No. If I full metal wall, then I lose because they just need a bosses to win. I have the bosses finally. Please tell me you didn't top deck a Marnie. Oh my god! I hate this card. Every time I have 
I have game in hand. Oh, there's a Marnie. Okay. But I have two more bosses. Did I get one? I got one. They can't do anything. They've played their supporter. If they have great catcher, they win. Uh, I mean, who's playing great catcher? It, come on, we're at the end of 2020. No one's playing great catcher, right? You know, maybe it was a game losing scenario with the Lucario Momoto putting that down because it's a great catcher target, but I mean, with the luck I was having not drawing bosses' orders, I figured I, I have to. I have to put Lucario Momoto down because maybe, oh, they're digging. They're digging for that great catcher. But I felt like I had to put it down because I didn't, I honestly didn't think I was ever going to see a boss's orders. So you can't blame me for putting down a potential game losing card because my luck drawing has been so bad. But, you know, I think I've showcased, I won't play another game. I think I've showcased just how good this deck can be because this is a pretty long game. Like my opponent's timer, they've already played for 10 minutes. You know, I've played for five minutes, so I mean, come on, hurry it up. But when you play against this deck, you have to do a lot of math. You have to do a lot of thinking. You have to know about Full Metal Wall. You have to know about Metal Goggles. You have to know about all these things. Uh, did they get the Great Catcher or not? You know, now, remember when I was in a position where I hope they didn't have bosses? They're in a position where they hope I don't have bosses. So that's that's a well played. That, that, was a, that was a close game. That was a good game. I I mean, I was in a position to lose a hundred times and then pulled it out the end, but I think you're seeing just how good this deck can be. The Aegis Slash VMAX uh, didn't really make a difference, but, you know, it was in the deck. The Coding Metal Energy, that is huge. I mean, hey, you can see their deck list, which is just your typical deck list with a Cobalion. But the Coding Metal Energy, that is by far the best new card in Vivid Voltage for this deck. You, It's a Metal Energy and you have no weakness. Senti Scorch is just like, what? This deck didn't need more help. And then you have a Sir Chester Bath, you take 20 less damage. I mean, it's really going to be a long-term thing. Does that really help the math? And then Aegis Lash V and VMAX. They're, it's a new Metal Type V and VMAX. I threw it in. I wasn't too impressed. Aegis Lash V, I mean... It helps you deal with the Sigui and Obstagoon if it's still going to be a thing in this format, but the, the main cards in the deck are the Cario Metal, Metal with the Full Metal Wall, you take 30 less damage, and if you have 2 energy, you discard all energy from your opponent's active, that's amazing. And then Sation V just does 230 turn after turn if you can switch into them. So the main two cards are these guys. Everything else is just gravy, and Cody Metal Energy gives you a chance against fire decks now. So this deck got better. I don't know if it's the best deck. It's definitely, you know, I'm, I'd say it's tier one. Tier 1.5, 1 tier one, it's really good. It slows the game down. It forces your opponent to know their math, know what they're facing. You just have so many options. The deck is amazing. Uh, I'll leave the deck list below. And as always, let me know what you think of the deck in the comments. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.